If you're like me, you might be tired of the stress and commercialism of the Christmas season and you just want to make someone a genuine nice gift. Well, I've been thinking about this for months and I came up with dozens of easy, fun, and genuine gift ideas that you can make at home. In today's video, I'll show you one of those ideas, but if you want to see the others, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on what's to come. My name is Bethany and this is Joyful Habits. hits, it's like this unspoken pressure to rush more, do more, spend more, do all the things, and oh no, they send you a Christmas card, but they weren't on your Christmas card list. It can be really hard to avoid the pessimism and commercialism and minimalism and maximism and all the isms that unfortunately just come along with the holidays uninvited. At least I didn't invite them. I don't know who invited them, if anyone. I think they're just crashing the party. And if you're like me, once December hits, you're just trying to have a good time. You're just trying to enjoy a good old fashioned Christmas with joy. Because believe it or not, Christmas is supposed to be a happy time where we spread love and peace and goodwill and all those things that this world desperately needs. I want my Christmas to be a happy time filled with joy and magic and nostalgia and Christmas miracles and snow. I really am a sucker for a white Christmas and especially when you get that gorgeous snowfall where the snowflakes are like this big and they're just fluttering down and they're sparkly and magical and you just are like Christmas miracle and chestnuts roasting over an open fire. I've never actually done that. Let me know in the comments if you have because I don't think I know anyone who has and I don't think I have. One moment. We're gonna write this down. Roast chestnut. That is now officially on the Christmas bucket list. With all that being said, today I want to share with you one of the ways I've found to slow down the craziness and bring it back to the simple joys of Christmas. And that is by making, not buying, the gifts that I give to people. Now, I'm not saying I don't buy things. I still buy things. I'm not this perfect human being who's impervious to commercialism. And even if I was, I mean, some of the things that my family and friends need and or want, I just can't make. I mean, making an ornament out of popsicle sticks is one thing, but don't expect me to build a toaster or shoes. I'm no cobbler. But I do like to give a mixture of homemade gifts and gifts that I bought when I can. And homemade gifts are really great too for those people that are just hard to buy for, don't really need anything, or those people who are trying to declutter their house and they're like, please no make that. These homemade gifts can be just the thing. Not to mention making homemade gifts can be so much fun and way more enjoyable than just scrolling the internet or wandering around a department store. And while I'm making the gift, I tend to think about the person I'm making it for and why I love them and how they've enriched my life and all the great times we've had together. And I'm jibber jabber, you get the point. So let's push aside the craziness, push aside the stress, and make ourselves a cup of hot cocoa. Where did that go? Here's my cup of hot cocoa. Make ourselves a cup of hot cocoa, put on a cozy sweater, play some Christmas music, and let's make some homemade gifts. There's not actually hot cocoa in this. But there will be. And another adventure is about to begin. Okay, and let's dive right in. I am really excited for today's video that we're getting into the Christmas season and Christmas content. I make homemade gifts every year, but this year I put a little extra thought into it and I came up with a lot of ideas. So I'm going to do my best to film as many videos as I can and share those ideas with you. So for the first Christmas gift idea, we're starting with something very simple, very basic, but I'm gonna show you how we can take something that most people think of and how we can really step it up a notch and make it something really special. I will say today's gift is not something I would make ahead of time 
and wrap up and you know put under the tree it's something that you would give to a neighbor or you know if you're going to visit someone and you want to bring something or you have you know a christmas party or something that this is the kind of gift i would i would make for that so i'm just making a basic chocolate chip cookie recipe here we started with butter and sugar and some vanilla i'm using vanilla paste and then you might notice here, instead of using a regular egg, I'm using a flaxseed egg. And if you've never heard of that, it's just mixing a tablespoon of ground flaxseed with three tablespoons of water. And you just let it sit for a little bit until it becomes, I don't know, kind of the consistency of an egg, I guess. And then you just add it in like you would a regular egg. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cost effective, especially uh, when egg prices were getting a little crazy <laughs> and I also like it because it is non-perishable so it's something that can be sitting in your pantry and you know stocked up and all that but anyway I digress I will put the recipe in the description box below if anyone's interested and if anyone is interested in the wooden utensils that I'm using like the wooden measuring cups and teaspoons and all that I'll link as much as I can in the description box below so this probably isn't unique to me but when I am baking during the holidays or making a homemade gift wrapping gifts decorating you know whatever it may be I really enjoy having a Christmas movie playing in the background or some Christmas music or you know have the fire going and light some candles or just you know really set the atmosphere so that it's a very relaxing and Christmassy environment. I also find that I'm usually doing these things in the evening rather than the morning or afternoon even if I have time in the morning or afternoon I tend to during the day be running errands or doing laundry or working or you know whatever the day holds and then in the evening it's sort of my time to just unwind and uh, you know relax and I really enjoy making things like I said a little bit in the intro I really enjoy making homemade gifts because it really is relaxing and you know <laughs> feels a lot more Christmassy than rushing around a department store or scrolling the internet. So, you know, to me, it's not a chore. It's something I look forward to. And so I think that's why I do it in the evenings because it's like, okay, I've been busy all day. I've been productive. I've done my work and now I can just relax and enjoy the Christmas ambiance and, you know, make a gift or bake a treat or in this case, we're baking a tree and making a gift. And I've made before those cookie jars that don't have the cookies already baked, but it's just like the cookie mix. It's all layered and it looks all cute. And then someone just has to basically dump it in a bowl and add, you know, milk or eggs or butter or whatever. And I thought about doing a video on that and I still might, but I don't know. I was like, well, why don't I just bake cookies and literally give someone a cookie jar with cookies? And speaking of treats, our first batch of cookies is out of the oven. And of course I have to taste test them before we give them away. So I poured myself some milk and we're gonna try these cookies out. The cookies were delicious and I ate maybe more than one or two or three or four cookies. And I finally had to show some self-control because I knew that I needed them for the video and also we're giving them away so if I eat the gift we won't have a gift to give. And then I realized that I made some of the cookies way too big and I could not fit them in the jar. Luckily I still had enough that would fit but I'm realizing I probably should have made like a bunch of mini cookies instead of big regular sized cookies. So if you try this and you're using the same jar I'm using here, which I'll have it linked in the description box below, just make sure you make your cookies a little smaller. <laughs> Otherwise it's a little tricky getting them in there. But it actually worked out. Like I said, there was enough cookies uh, that still fit in the jar. And now all the cookies that don't fit in the jar, I will just have to eat.
and there we go we have a jar of cookies now i think this already looks super adorable but of course we're not going to stop here we're going to dress it up a bit You might be noticing that that plate of cookies is very quickly dwindling. <laughs> I did not eat them all by myself. My husband ate some as well and I shared some with family but uh, yeah they did not last long. Actually I think they were all eaten by the end of this night. I don't even think they made it to the next day. So yeah it was cookies were good. So I started playing around with a bunch of different Christmas ribbon that I had and just little things and just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I tried putting this big bow just around the base of the jar and I thought I liked that, but you'll see in a little bit here that I end up changing that. As I say in every video, the possibilities are endless. So I think I was feeling a little overwhelmed by the endless possibilities and just trying to figure out where am I going with this? What theme do I want and what color scheme? I had this wooden tag left over from another project I did years ago, but I, I don't know, I didn't really like it. And so I then had the idea, what if I made my own tag out of some felt that I had and then just embroidered something on it or, you know, decorated it somehow. And I felt pretty good about that idea, so I decided to pursue it. So I grabbed some red embroidery thread and my vintage scissors that I'm also sort of obsessed with. They somehow make their way in almost every one of my videos. I'll also have those linked below if you're interested. Grabbed a needle and just started to decorate my tag and kind of play around. I decided to start by just giving it a nice border. And then I was trying to decide what to embroider on it. And I was originally going to embroider, you know, to so-and-so and from so-and-so. But I realized it would be hard to fit that on there because I did not give myself much room. And also I wanted this to be something a little bit more generic or maybe reusable. So then I thought, well, why not just put Merry Christmas on it? So I embroidered Merry Christmas on the tag. And then I grabbed these little mini clothespins that I had. I forget where or why I got those. I've had those for a while too, though. And I decided to use that to attach the tag. And I went outside and grabbed some greenery from a tree. And then I also switched out the ribbons that I had on the jar. I took that big ribbon off. I grabbed some more of the red embroidery thread and wrapped that around the jar just so it was sort of more cohesive and it would match the tag. So I really liked this. I felt good about where this was going but it just still felt like it needed something. So I grabbed some of this red twine or ribbon that I had and I tied a little bow, held it up to the jar, and voila, I was like, yep, that's what's missing. That is gonna tie it all together. So I grabbed my hot glue gun and glued the ribbon onto the mini clothespin. So it would kind of cover the greenery and the tag a little bit and I was very happy. This, I felt like, really brought it all together and just made it a complete look. I really love how this looks. It looks very vintage, sort of rustic, uh, just old-fashioned Christmas, especially with the jar having the wooden lid. I really liked that. And yeah, I just was like, okay, this looks good. I like this. And I don't know about you, but I would be very happy to get this as a gift. And I think the person I'm giving it to will be very happy as well. So yeah, it just, I hope this inspires you a little bit and shows you how, you know, even something as simple as baking someone a batch of cookies, which might not seem like a big deal, can really be made a lot more special with just I don't know how you package it basically, you know, instead of just uh, baking cookies and throwing it on a paper plate and being like, here you go, you know, you could uh, put it in a jar, 
You could wrap it up really cute and put it in a basket. You could put it on a, a, a plate and then just, again, wrap it and put like a bow around it. There's so many ways that you can take a simple gift and just really make it feel really special. And I don't know, it's all in the packaging really. <laughs> And there we have a very simple gift, but packaged very beautifully, I think. And I think it will be very appreciated. As you can see, we have already been eating cookies. To control myself and not eat these because I was like, I haven't finished filming the video and I need cookies to be in the jar. Otherwise it's just a jar but it is the best jar. I love this jar. If you missed my homemade firefly jar that I filmed this last summer, check that out because that's when I first discovered this beautiful jar. I kind of have an obsession. I just love everything about it. I love the lid, I love the shape, I love the size, and I promised in that video that this jar would be coming back. Here we are, it's back, so. And this is not the last you'll see of it either. It will probably come back again and again and again so yeah i had a lot of fun today i hope you guys had fun as well and i hope this has inspired you and shown you how even a simple thing like baking someone cookies can be made so much more special when you dress it up and make it fun i have a lot more fun ideas coming so make sure you're keeping an eye out for my next video and until then this has been joyful habits where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary i'll see you all very very soon and don't forget to smile. Bye, friends. And now I can eat the rest of the cookies. Bye, friends. Bye.